Last time, we saw that there appear to be changes between the original science and the new science. There's actually a huge difference, but we are given the impression that science has always been as it is now. The original science follows the scientific method. It's the science of Kepler, Newton, Leibniz, Mendeleev, Joule, Maxwell, Dalton, Faraday, and many other great scientists. This science presupposes that the creation was created by a creator. The aim of science is to find out the laws that govern the creation. Francis Bacon designed the scientific method for this purpose. That kind of science is today known as creation science. The new science is built on the idea that the creation created itself. Obviously, that means that the new science will be very interested in how the creation created itself. Without some justification for a belief that the creation did create itself, Today's scientists would have no grounds for calling themselves intellectually fulfilled atheists, as Richard Dawkins put it in The Blind Watchmaker. But whether they're intellectually fulfilled or not, the denial of the creator has led to the new science being known as secular science. Quite a large part of secular science is aimed at trying to find out how things came into being. This had no part in the original science at all. Secular science has to speculate about the origin of the cosmos. At present, the accepted hypothesis involves a primordial explosion, which must be the most unscientific idea ever to pose as science. There's a similar situation with the origin of life. The original science presupposed that the creator had created everything, including life. The original aim of biology was to discover what plants and animals are and how they work. But if the universe created itself, secular science needs to account for life. It needs to find a method of making life from simple atoms. And once life has started, a theory of evolution from simple to complex is another absolute necessity. These questions to be answered by secular science have led to an absolutely crucial difference between the old and the new. An essential part of the scientific method is if any evidence shows a hypothesis or theory is not true, it must be abandoned and another sort. But the new science is full of hypotheses about the process of creation itself. If these hypotheses are shown to be wrong, they could only be abandoned at the cost of losing the very foundation on which secular science stands. So that step in the scientific method had to be removed. In the 1960s and 70s, secular science started waging a campaign to discredit the scientific method. They claimed, for example, that people like Newton didn't use the scientific method. They claimed that Newton didn't make observations and measurements about gravity, but only proposed a hypothesis. That may be true, but Newton used the observations and measurements of Galileo, Brahe and Kepler, and he acknowledged this in his famous statement, If I was able to see further than others, it was by standing on the shoulders of giants. The scientific method doesn't state that all of the steps must be performed by one person. The critics also pointed out that some of the steps of the scientific method had been applied out of order. True, but that doesn't invalidate the method. Having made a case to discredit the scientific method, the offending step was replaced by what's called the best in the field theory. If observations contradict a hypothesis, it remains valid until a materialistic alternative 
has been accepted by the scientific establishment. This means that the new science is forced to accept hypotheses known to be false until a materialistic alternative is accepted by the establishment. We can see why Richard Lewontin had to admit that secular science has to accept patent absurdities and unsubstantiated just-so stories, and why Giuseppe Sermonti was so disgusted to find that the supporters of Darwinism do not believe it themselves. And since there's no evidence for evolution, they have to keep plugging away at it so that people will be brainwashed to think it's true. Biology textbooks describe the marvels of the creation and say, without any proof, that this came about by evolution. They could just as well say they came about because the fairy queen waved her magic wand. Speculation about how they came into being is not real science. Genuine science deals with how the creation works, not with how it came into being. All this doesn't mean that the whole of secular science is entirely valueless. Far from it. In many fields, excellent work is being done, and wonderful discoveries are being made. But wherever research findings conflict with ideas essential to the secular worldview, we should be very careful, because the scientific method will be outlawed, and we'll be fed unsubstantiated just so stories. I hope that gives you an idea of the difference between the original science and the established secular science of today. In the next several episodes, I want to look at one of the pillars on which secular science stands, evolution. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.